Hello, my name is Owen Lodge, and I'm here with my partner, Caden Dooner, to present to you our current experiment, lunar dust mitigation on spacecraft in low-gravity freefall environments. We are working in tandem with Blue Cube Aerospace and the Wolfpack and Wolverine CubeSat development teams out of the Weiss School in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. So a little more about what the Wolverine CubeSat development team is and what we do. We are a group of middle school students all the way up to high school, and we all have an interest in aerospace-related activities. We were founded in 2015, and what we do is we like to engage students in PBL, problem-based learning. Uh, since 2015, we have done a lot of aerospace competitions and just projects in general. Uh, ever since then, we've had a, lot, a couple uh, high-altitude balloon launches, and we've even been selected for two proposals through NASA's CubeSat launch initiative, one being the WhiteSat, which was launched in 2018, and our CampSat, which is currently still being worked on but is set to launch in 2021. This year, however, we have students working on our new addition, the Amaris Lunar Rover, which is going to be a 1U sized rover based on technology of that of a CubeSat, and it will be investigating the mitigation of lunar dust since it is such a major problem using electric and magnetic fields. Now, through research, my partner and I have found out the immense difficulties that the lunar dust um, offers on the lunar surface. The main example of which is during the Apollo 17 mission, which actually had difficulty operating and running due to the dust. And you can see a picture of the commander Gene Cernan on the right after stepping foot on the moon covered in this lunar fine particulate. So this dust is believed to contain toxic properties due to its high levels of crystalline silica, which is a known carcinogen. On top of this, due to constant um, braiding of micrometeorites, the dust has become very fine, small, and sharp, which creates problems for the astronauts as after analyzation of the suits from returning from their mission, they found that the dust cut through three layers of Kevlar on the knees and legs of the suits of the astronauts. Additionally, the dust after exposure to the constant solar winds in ultraviolet radiation from the sun due to the lack of atmosphere on the moon it becomes electrostatically charged. And this is because of the um, solar winds and flares creating um, photo and secondary electron emissions from the lunar dust, positively charging them and causing them to rise off the ground as they are repelled from each other. And this force is great enough to overcome that of gravity on the moon. So therefore there is a levitating layer of fine sharp particulate on the moon which causes problems not only for the astronauts, but for the equipment that they bring along. So here is a list of the materials that we would use to construct our dust box and with that we would use in the experiment overall. Our dust box is just to hold everything in place involving our lunar highland simulant, our electric and magnetic fields, and the uh, sample piece, which would, we would call our rover, which is just a satellite in the box, just a test to see if we can get that dust mitigated. We used Lexan sheets to create the box, and of course we had to use some rubber gasket on the top and adhes adhesive sealant to make sure that the box is sealed since we want to create a space-like environment to best simulate what it would be like in a real life scenario uh, on the moon surface. Um, you'll notice on top of the box, we have a gate valve. This is just there to let the uh, vacuum pump in. Since again, we want to create this space-like environment, we need to create a vacuumless area where this dust can interact with those uh, fields. So the gate valve is there to just make sure that everything can be done properly. As for our regolith, we use the UCF's Exolith Lunar Highland Simulant for our simulant. Other materials that we would later use uh, for our magnetic field, we used a 50 pound magnet or 10,000 Gauss for our magnetic field. And for the electric field, we used indium tin oxide plates. I also with a DC power supply where we ran a positive charge through one plate a negative charge through the other, thus creating the electric field right in the middle of those two plates, which we would put on top of the lid and on the bottom of the lid. And of course a vacuum pump just to uh, create, get all the air out of the box, create a vacuumless environment. Now, 
the basis of this experiment lies in the laws of electrostatics and that of vacuum theory so that we can utilize them here on earth and create a situation as we would on the moon. So I would first like to begin with the vacuum theory actually to bounce off of what my partner was saying and just elaborate on how we're creating a vacuum in that box to try and further simulate the um, conditions that we will be facing on the moon with our eventual lunar rover. Um, so we are just going to be utilizing the equations as seen here and be using a continuum flow uh, vacuum um, to just to best fit our needs. As for the laws of electrostatics, we are using the basic Newtonian theory that like charges repel, opposite charges attract to um, base our experiment off of. However, we are aware that there are more advanced equations with further um, research and more advanced um, research studies that have been done on similar topics and we have begun to look into these, study these, and utilize these. Um, we have also found that a charged particle will be accelerated in an electric field and a magnetic field and so we're going to be utilizing this to try and repel and mitigate the lunar dust by creating a positive field on the technology that we're using to try and repel the positivity of the lunar regolith that I mentioned earlier from the ultraviolet radiation. So we conducted our first experiment just testing the voltage and making sure that the indium tin oxide plates would uh, pass that voltage through and so there wouldn't really be any error in our experiments. Uh, you can see the chart on the slide there that just shows the voltage that we put through the ITO plates and the voltage we got uh, from it when we placed it with the uh, multimeter. We got a 2% drop off of the voltage through those plates, which basically means that there was no error. So the ITO plates, or there was little error, I should say. So the ITO plates would be effective in uh, creating that electric field and supplying the voltage through there. As for our magnetic and electric field strength, we calculated them using the theories from our last slide, and we got them uh, the strengths as seen there. Originally, we we're going to use a uh, Arduino and a code there to get the magnetic field strength and the electric field strength. However, we had some complications with that. So we were looking for better uh, alternatives to find the strength of these fields. Uh, most importantly, our main test was the electric and magnetic fields and whether uh, and the efficacy that they had on mitigating the dust. We would later find that the dust that we had our simulant needed to be ionized and it was not fully magnetized. So thus the electric and magnetic fields uh, showed no effect on the simulant. We were told and we discovered that we would need to uh, try and ionize this dust either through tribocharging and or just finding a better way to uh, get a magnetic property to that dust, uh, which we'll talk about in our next experiment. Now, in order to continue this experiment after um, we found uh, little to no results or inconclusive results, we decided to rework it with new techniques and new materials. So first we decided to try and charge the lunar simulant that we have with a Van de Graaff generator. And we used uh, small tin pie plates as the original vessel for this lunar Highlander simulant. And we found, however, that there were, it was ir irresponsive, unresponsive to the um, Van de Graaff generator while being held in these tins. So we decided to continue to revise and rework our experiment and replace the tins with polypropylene containers after finding that these are very good ele um, electrical conductors. Then we crafted a cardboard stand in order to keep the lunar dust within a close enough proximity to the Van de Graaff generator in order to see the effects that it had. Um, the simulant did react, indicating that it became charged by the uh, Van de Graaff generator. So this was a very interesting result to see. And despite it being sim different from the um, process by which the simulant is charged on the lunar surface, it was still similar enough that we can utilize it in our experiments. Um, then we decided to test the charge simulant with the indium tin oxide plates that my partner mentioned by holding them around the container that the um, LHS, the Lunar Highlander simulant, was uh, kept in and observing how it reacted. Now this, ionized, this newly ionized dust repelled from the positively charged ITO plate 
meaning that the simulant had become positively charged or ionized, and therefore our, proof, our concept was shown to work in this scenario as the positively charged lunar simulant repelled from the positively charged ITO plate. As for our future experiments, we again want to repeat this experiment using our revised methods, using the Van de Graaff standard to ionize that dust, and we definitely need to find a better way to utilize the magnetic properties of this simulant since we definitely want to create a more realistic uh, example for when we actually do this on the moon surface with our own rover. Uh, with the experiment, we have found that there was some error and some difficulties that we need to improve upon for our next uh, experiments over the years. Uh, definitely the most important uh, difficulty is that lunar dust is difficult to simulate. Even though we have great simulants that we can use, we're not going to be able to get a simulant that is closely resembling the actual lunar dust on the moon uh, where it has different properties. So. That's definitely difficult to simulate, but I believe we can find a way to do that as well. Constructing the, the dust box was an issue for us since we were kind of on a budget, so we couldn't use the best materials to keep everything in place. So there definitely could have been some cracks, some flaws with that dust box that we may want to improve upon later down the line. Calculating the electric and magnetic field. I kind of mentioned this earlier with the Arduino that we wanted to use originally. We had problems with it. There's definitely more room for error by doing it by hand and using the equations. Uh, we just want to find a better way to actually get the exact uh, magnetic field strength of each of those as well. Uh, moving on to uh, uh, the future for Amaris, which is our rover. We still want to set out for construction by 2021. We have found all materials and parts necessary for this rover to be built uh, through different companies, and we just need to purchase those and assemble them, and we'll be doing that over the next couple of years. In regards to using electric and magnetic fields for our rover to mitigate this dust, we're thinking of using both, since both do have their benefits if we can find a way to utilize both. Uh, through our research, we found that magnetic fields generally uh, are better used when with stationary objects and electric fields are better used when they're moving. So if we can find a way to use both of those on our rover, we would be best, uh, we would have a solution to every like stationary, if our rover is stationary and if our rover is moving. Uh, again, we want to complete more tests involving the proper methods and our revised methods. And we definitely need to purchase all these materials and maybe have a prototype out later down this year and get that finalized version ready in 2021. We definitely want to build, test, design, and launch as well. So uh, just to quickly wrap things up, the lunar dust continues to be an issue on uh, the moon due to its sharpened by nature, its toxicity, and its tendency to float once it is uh, positively charged from the ultraviolet radiation and the solar flares. However, we believe that it may be possible to mitigate this lunar dust using um, both electric and magnetic fields to try and repel it from any systems or potentially people that we send to the moon. So our experiment showed that the um, electric magnetic fields initially had no effect on the simulated dust. However, we are going to continue to revise and repeat it and try and find new ways to mitigate the lunar simulant in order to try and find an effective way to do so with our Mars rover when we do send it to the moon. So our student research researchers of all ages continue to work on the Mars and are beginning new tests and new ideas. Thank you for uh, joining us for our presentation. If you have any questions, please just leave them in the chat below.